My name is Yuval Ivry. I'm a postdoctoral researcher in SOAS University of London. Um, in the last decade, I'm working on Arab Jewish intellectuals, um, a network of, of intellectuals that mostly, most of them were born in the second, um, uh, the, the, the end of the 19th century in Palestine, but uh, during their life, were traveling to other, uh, to other uh, um, places, they were, um, uh, some of them were uh, studying in Beirut and Cairo, uh, in Berlin, Heidelberg, uh, uh, Frankfurt, some of them went to the, to the Southeast Asia, uh, and, and so their, their influence in, 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 uh, in a way was, was diverse, the, the intellectual and cultural influence that they were, they were getting was, was diverse. Uh, they were very influential, influenced from the European Jewish uh, circles from the Ascala and the vision of the, uh, the studentum, uh, but in the same time they were very influenced by another uh, movement in in, uh, in Cairo, in Beirut, and uh, uh, in Jaffa and other places that they were involved in, and 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 also from the Tanzimat, the the, the Turkish uh, Ottoman uh, reform uh, reform uh, movement uh, that was in the in the time very very influential. First of all, I'm a second generation of an Arab uh, Jewish immigrants to... Both of my parents uh, were born in Iraq and uh, moved in the early 50s with most of the community. Um, um, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a, for me, it's a tragic move uh, because it's, it's because of the context of 1948, the, the partition of Palestine and the situation and you know, the conflict between Zionism and and, um, and Arab nationalism, uh, my family and I think the, the, the wider community of the Arab Jews uh, had the, the, the options that they had uh, was limited and, and they had to, uh, to uh, immigrate uh, to Palestine and then Israel already. Uh, so this kind of, the, and since then, you know, the second generation and the third generation of Arab Jews in Israel had to had the very strong de arabized process, and I'm in many ways part of this. I'm the second generation that had this process of de arabized, and it's really hard to be disassociate from the place. First, the language, and then the place that your parents and grandparents were born in, uh, lived in, the context, the wider context of your personal story. But I think it's it's in many ways it's it's, it's a wider question. So from the beginning, from early age, these kind of questions uh, were very strong in my mind. I was always curious to know what happened in Iraq, what happened uh, during the, the immigration to, to Israel. Um, but I always had the blockage of what I can understand. Because at first, because of the parents, the generation of my parents that didn't, that didn't want to talk about it. Because it's like the old life that we have to forget to be part of, uh, to do the... the, the becoming Israeli citizens, you have to forget your, your, Arabic, uh, your Arabic past or your old past, so they, they weren't really compar uh, uh, cooperative uh, regarding it. But the, the other part of it is that you don't have Arabic, so you are disassociated from this kind of a context. And what you learn in school in Israel, you're learning um, either that in 48, you don't learn a lot about Arab Jews in the history. Uh, but if you, you learn something, it's it's a story of persecution, the story of Zionism coming and saving the Arab Jews, and you are learning that in forty eight, uh, th this kind of a, of a history is is finished, and you don't need any connection to it. So for me, from my early age, th this kind of curiosity was very strong, and when I went into university, I was very involved politically in uh, Mizrahi Arab Jewish uh, circles vis-a-vis -vis their situation in Israel, but from there it developed into them, to my uh, interest uh, uh, in research. Uh, so my first research, big research in my MA, was on Arab Jewish writers in Iraq that started to write in Arabic and moved to Hebrew. Uh, people like Shimon Bala, Sami Michael, Yitzhak Bo Moshe, um, Samir Nakash, that some of them stretched, continue writing in Arabic in, in Israel, even though they immigrated. The dinner, the, you know, Sasson Somech uh, called them uh, uh, writers without an audience because nobody could, the Arab Jews are not reading Arabic and at the same time Palestinian didn't have the, the interest of, in these kind of uh, stories. But some of them moved to write in Hebrew and, and 
stayed politically, uh, either non-Zionist or anti-Zionist, and had a different view, either they writing, continue writing in Hebrew. People like Shimon Balas that I was more focused uh, into. So th this kind of a move was really interesting for me. And then in my PhD, I said, let's go moment before, for, because the, 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 the moment of um, rupture in, the, in this case, that is 48. <clears throat> the moving from the Arab space, from Iraq, where you've been in an Arab atmosphere, you're writing in Arabic, and moving to Israel uh, after 48, and you have to go and adjust yourself to a new surrounding and writing in Hebrew. So the move from Arabic to Hebrew was, 48 was the moment. But then in my PhD, I wanted to go back before 48, and to go to the, this Arab Jews, uh, more specifically on Palestinian Jews, living in Palestine, and have this kind of... Uh, uh, um, um, issues that they, they were dealing with con concerning the Arabic uh, uh, identity and their connection to Arabic language and connected to Judeo-Arabic uh, heritage and the question of Zionism that, uh, and Jewish moderniz modernization that, uh, that uh, erupts in the time. So I'm going back to the turn of the 20th century. That is a formative moment in many ways, either in Palestine, the history of Palestine, the political history, the cultural history the, and the, the, the history of, of modernization of Jewish culture and Hebrew culture. And you go into this formative moment and I found a group of intellectuals that saw themselves, they weren't passive in this, uh, even though, but forgotten. This, this kind of intellectual that I found, they, are, they were very active in the time, but they were forgotten during the historiography about this period. And when I went to them and I, I started reading in their writings and the mostly debates that they had with European Jews, I saw different options, uh, opportunities culturally, politically to this to the, to, to to Jewish modernization, the, the Jewish connection to Arab culture, to uh, re-imagining uh, uh, Judeo-Arabic uh, future together, and of course to Palestine, and, and it was fascinating for me to to discover this kind of writing, discover the dispute that they had, discover in many ways missed opportunities that was forgotten uh, during the historiography, the official historiography. And tracing back to this kind of an option, maybe we can understand better our uh, contemporary issues. Uh, um, because they lived already in an in a era that, they, in, that uh, they were forced to be uh, uh, with, the, with the multiple realities because they felt themselves very strongly, most of them were Zionist in the, in the, in the different meaning that we know now what Zionism. <clears throat> but at the same time, they felt as an Arab nationalist or Arab cultural connection, really strong connection to the Arab culture. Well, maybe I will redefine it. And they didn't see it as a contradictory. Uh, they saw it as a, as a mutual project. For them, the revival of Hebrew language have to go together with revival of Arabic. It's, it's the same project. It's not contradictory as we see it today. Today we, we, we're learning about Arabic and Hebrew as, as, as two languages of, of, of enemies, as, a, as opposition. For them, it's, 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 it's only through going back to Arabic we can really revive Hebrew. Um, because in many ways, Arabic was, was a Jewish language for many years. Uh, most of the, and, and for them, of course, the model is Al-Andalus. Uh, and the biggest Jewish thinkers, uh, like uh, Maimonides, like uh, Yehuda Halevi, like uh, Ibn Gevirol, uh, Ibn uh, uh, Ezra, and, and others, uh, was writing in Arabic. Um, Sa'ad Yagaon translated the Bible in the 3rd century to Arabic because most of the Jews read Arabic. Uh, so for them, Arabic is it's, it's, it's the language of the, the Judeo-Arabic, uh, the Judeo-Muslim uh, tradition that is combined together. Uh, and they saw the project, the, uh, the, the, um, the established project of the, of the European Zionism that came in the same time to the area, they saw it as a, as a, as a, as a, as a opposition, as a different project that they wanted for this area. For them, the project of the European Zionist was more connected to Judeo-Christian uh, tradition, to Westernization of Jewish culture, uh, to Europeization of Jewish culture, instead of they thought that the, the connection has to be going back and revive the Judeo-Muslim uh, tradition, uh, and especially when, when Jews are going back to Palestine and going back to the East, going back to the, to the Arab surrounding and, and, and going back for them, we're going back to their origin in many ways. 
there is two moments in the history of Judeo-Muslim uh, relations that are very tragic in a way, and uh, one of them is Al-Andalus, uh, uh, 1492, and um, um, the, 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 the expel expulsion of Jews and Muslims from Al-Andalus and from this know, uh, symbiosis, uh, culturally, uh, uh, theologically, uh, Philosoph philosophical wise and, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and I think the second moment, the big moment is, is the, the rise of the two, the national, the, the, the collapse of the Ottoman Empire and the rise of national uh, movements. Uh, so I will put it maybe 1917, people will put it in 1948, I will more put the emphasis on 1917 as, as, a, as a crucial moment. So I think that this kind of I don't know, partitioned fragmented past, we need to go back to this moment, not to, not to idealize it, not to put it as in, in nostalgic. We have to be careful not to put it in nostalgic, uh, but only to continue the conversation, because the conversation stopped. And we are not anymore putting together the, the Jewish uh, tradition with the Muslim tradition, and, and to see the intertwined. Almost, you, you can't really understand Jewish tradition without Muslim tradition, and, and vice versa. And you can't understand Arabic, uh, Hebrew without Arabic, uh, and, and, and vice versa. So th this kind of intertwined uh, have lots of tension into it. It's not only harmonic and uh, and wonderful and rosy, but it's 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 still intertwined. And we can't and the separation that we have, disciplinary wise and academic wise, and politically of course and culturally. It's it's the, it's what stops this conversation. We have to re, re I don't know, um, re engage with this kind of conversation. We have to promote this kind of conversation. I think in many ways this conference is that's what he's doing, and and the fact that is is made in Germany in Berlin with the with the with the, with you know the 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 recent con context of the Islamic and uh, uh, Islam Islamophobic. Uh, problem, immigrants, uh, the, the Turkish problem, and so on and so forth. And of course, the Jewish question that, are, again, for me, they are intertwined. So the fact that it's in Berlin here now, it's even stronger and it's not taking place in other places. And we have to put it inside the conversation too.